we have to recognize that when disconnections happen for us is we have to name that, right? We are in a negative cycle and we're going to talk about just understanding that when people are creating that distance or maybe starting to approach with anxious strategy, which is maybe blaming, judging, criticizing, we have to recognize we are in a negative cycle, period, because that loss of connection is actually creating all of that stress in our brain. And the way we learn how to respond to that disconnection continues to fuel that negative cycle. So it could be that we are direct report and our manager doesn't want to talk to us or avoids us or maybe being critical. Well, all of that are indicators that there's a disconnection, at, even at least to recognize what is happening. So when you learn how to tune into your emotions, understand emotions and process these emotions, you start to actually co-regulate other people's emotions because we are co-regulators of each other's emotions. How to set like a really good precedence when like new employees come in so they don't come in feeling like, oh, well, this is just a job because right. that's going to start right. that negative cycle. And so kind of like, what can we do to make it very clear? Like, this is how we communicate and this is what starts. I think onboarding process in terms of education and how people actually impact each other, what triggers us, how do we pay attention to those things? All of these components help people to be more aware of it. I think yeah. awareness is number one. Hi, I'm Dr. Lola Gershfeld, and I help companies master the art of relationships so they can overcome interpersonal conflict issues and keep the talent they deserve. In loss of connection, we start to feel that rejection, and it's not by choice. It's, it's Our brain is wired that way. And neuroscientists actually finding constructive feedback in the, in an insecure relationship when you don't have that connection comes back as criticism. And Jill Hooley, who did the research on criticism, criticism is processed in our brain as low-grade punches to the brain. I just want you to think about that because that is very painful. It hurts and it doesn't make us feel better. The same thing with Naomi Eisenberger research that shows that rejection is processed in the same part of the brain as physical pain. So stepping on a nail and seeing rejection on somebody else's face where you depend on these people like your manager or your direct report or your colleague is like stepping on a nail. It hurts, it's, it's actually physical pain. So it's very important to understand these patterns. And this is what we're talking about, right? To recognize what happens to the us when we get triggered and what, what do we do in that moment when we lose that connection? Do we start to pursue and blame, judge, criticize, you know, like when somebody says, oh, you know, you, you got up during our meeting and that's very rude. Well, what I just, I just created anger. I blamed you. I judged you instead of saying that makes me worried. Uh, maybe this is not interesting to you, or maybe I'm not, I'm not interesting, or this topic is not interesting. Now, I'm, I'm creating a better and safer conversation. So we go into that pursuer mode or we go into withdrawal mode. And withdrawal mode, basically they shut down or they, they avoid, they distance. Um, all of that is also preserving the connection. So both people actually want the connection. One does it pursuing, actively pursuing, and the other one withdrawing. What we, what people both not realizing is that they actually fuel the cycle by both of these strategies. The more one withdraws, the other becomes more pursuer. The more one pursues, the other becomes more withdrawer. So they kind of like feed off each other. But what, what they really saying to each other is, are you there for me? Are you there for me? Do I matter to you? Do I care about, can I call you when I, can I call you? Can I rely on me? Will you respond to me? Uh, as the withdrawal distances and more disengaged, the pursuer becomes more activated because the answer is no, you're not there for me, right? And the withdrawer says, well, how can I be there for you? You're coming at me so aggressively and with two knives in your, in your hands. So all of that continues to create more disconnection and people start to feel alone and isolated with low productivity and disengagement. And now we know that really disconnection isolate people and people cannot heal in isolation. I'm gonna say that again. 
People cannot heal in isolation. The more isolated you feel, the more exhausted you feel. In fact, emotional exhaustion is number one cause for turnover intentions. The more exhausted you start to feel, the more burnt out you feel. It's not about the amount of work. It's about the connection, whether you have connection with you, the people that you work with. That's what gives you energy, motivation, um, continued, uh, continued support, and feeling not lonely. 